Happy Monday morning, everyone. Here we are starting our week off right in God's word and prayer together like we should on this beautiful, beautiful Minnesota day. My goodness, this is what we want to keep from the rest of the country, everybody. Everybody's going to move here, and then those people from the south are going to want to just die in the wintertime. Joke's on them. Minnesota's a, a for real state here. But here we are on this beautiful, beautiful summer day, and we're going to get in God's Word together as we start this week out in devotion. And um, today we're going to dig into some verses that always give me pause when I'm reading Scripture. I go, wait a minute. Is that right? Is that not sinful? Wait a minute. Where are we doing, Jesus? I think you're kind of messing up your persona. This is not your vibe. This is not your brand when he does this stuff in, in Scripture. And it always uh, intrigues me. So we're going to dig into that a little bit. And we're going to use Mark chapter 7 that uh, Pastor uh, Heining shared, um, kind of tradition, uh, a sermon about traditions in um, worship this weekend at Redeemer. So go check out that live stream um, about that. Great sermon. Good to think about. But we're going to narrow in on a few different verses that really caught my attention and um, I think are worth talking about and uh, hearing about. Again, verses that make you go, Jesus, you're off brand. Jesus, you're, you're not vibing here the way you should. Um, but here is Jesus, and it's in Scripture, and here it is. We have to deal with it. So here we are. Mark chapter 7, and we're going to start down at verse 17. Okay? And this is after he's had the discussion with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law as they discussed, um, you know, cleanliness and why didn't you, your disciples wash their hands like they're supposed to? The tradition says, why not just follow the traditions of, of the elders, Jesus? Why are your disciples disobeying those traditions of the elders? And Jesus is kind of like, you're getting on to me, but you're big hypocrites because you're not doing what the intent of the law was meant to do. Um, you're just like washing and judging people for washing, but that's not what makes a person dirty is, is washing just to keep you clean from those, those heathens in the marketplace. It's not what keeps you worthy by um, neglecting the fourth commandment, uh, honor your father and mother by um, finding ways to defraud your father and mother and cheat them of um, needed support. And uh, so here we are, as we're on a football field, and these are super busy this time of year, and, uh, and we're gonna be thinking about this because when we're on a football field, uh, I, that was a big jump, sorry about that. Jesus is scolding those teachers of the law and those Pharisees, and they're getting on to him, and then he goes into a quiet room with his disciples. His disciples ask about this too, the same question the, the Pharisees and, and the teachers of the law had. The disciples are like, wait a minute, Jesus, Seriously, like, what's going on here? And Jesus says something that just strikes me. And um, that's why we're on a football field. Maybe that's a better connection here, is as we're watching, many of you will be watching football this season. Probably some, many of you have been watching baseball as baseball season's been on, or any sport. And as you're watching it, at many times in the game, you look at the players and go, what are you, an idiot or stupid or all those words? Sorry to say this on devotion, Michael. My goodness, Michael, don't say those mean words. But many of uh, people watching sports will say that and worse when a player does something so silly. You're like, why didn't you just? And of course, us slightly or more than slightly out of shape people on the couch couldn't even do one eighth of the maneuver that that professional sport athlete um, was doing, but they should have done that more. They should have seen that much more of the field. They should have reached that high, higher, run that, that, that much faster, grabbed onto that person that much stronger. We couldn't have done a little bit of it, but we call them stupid for not doing what they're supposed to. And that's probably not showing our Christian nature. And so in our world, that's what it, what it kind of looks like when we call someone um, not smart or, or get mad at someone for not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and so here is where my first, uh, you know, branding problem that I get to with Jesus. As he's had this talk with the Pharisees and this, his, um, the teachers of the law and the disciples ask him here in verse 17. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. This parable about, um, now wait a minute, Jesus, you say that uh, nothing um, that is outside a person can defile them, but we have these clean food laws that 
God gave us. God gave us this law. He told us not to eat this stuff. And and now you're you're kind of ripping on these Pharisees that that, that that that's not what it's about. And I'm so confused, Jesus, because wasn't God the one, you know, the one that you say is your father said to do this, but now you're saying we don't have to do this. And people today might look at this lesson in scripture and kind of wonder, is this God contradicting himself here? So let's explore this a little bit. Um, but first, we're going to explore this first phrase that Jesus says. Um, he asked him about this parable, um, and Jesus says, Are you so dull? Now, that is um, an older phrase, dull, but we know what that means. Most of you watching this devotion, I think, would connect that to what that really means. It's like, why aren't you very, you're not very smart, are you? As a maybe a more pointed, meaner way to say that. Are you so dull, Jesus says. And we could say, Jesus, my goodness, you're not supposed to say that sort of stuff. You're supposed to be all kind and flowery and sugary and super sweet and never say anything mean or think anything that could be interpreted as mean. Um, and we might be missing the point a little bit. Now, as Christians, of course, what we're going to do is, is try to choose the kindest words possible and, and be kind. Um, but Scripture also says, speak the truth in love. Now, to speak the truth without love here would be Jesus just calling them dull, walking out, angry with them, and never talking, them to again, talking to them again. But here Jesus does speak the truth. Guys, you should know this already. Why, why are you so slow to pick this up? That's the truth. They're, they're not keeping up. And, and Jesus has been working hard to help them keep up. We're in chapter 7 of Mark, and Mark moves along here. And uh, Jesus is honest. There's a little frustration here. Is it sinful to be frustrated? Is it sinful to notice that your students aren't kind of keeping up with where you want them to be? Is it sinful as a parent to kind of call to task your child who is... Um, who needs a little correction to bring on path. And if you have raised children, you might say, gosh, I hope not. Otherwise, I have so much to ask for forgiveness for. So Jesus says, are you so dull and Christians, especially us goody two-shoe Christians that, that want everything to be sugary and sweet and no, no harsh word ever said, which is not what Christianity promises. I hope you know that. This world is harsh, and we are to be innocent as doves, but wise as serpents, right? We are supposed to be able to exist in this world, and we're not supposed to cuss people out like sailors. We're supposed to honor God's name and be loving. But sometimes that loving means bring people to task and help them to see where they're falling short. And here is Jesus being very frank with these disciples. Are you so dull? Ooh, that might get their attention, right? But he doesn't leave it there. He says, I find you in this place, like he found all of us sinners, but I'm going to take you somewhere else. And so he keeps talking. And this is important stuff and groundbreaking stuff. Imagine yourself in a world where the food laws are super important and paramount. And, and your ancestors have run into trouble with these food laws in the past. And there's been a, a, a strong work to kind of keep them in the future. Excuse me. And here you are. Um, dealing with this and Jesus almost changes. He basically changes um, hundreds and hundreds of years of history with one phrase. Are you so dull? Jesus says. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declares all food clean. Are you off brand, Jesus? God, your Father, gave us these laws, and you're saying now you just pushed them to the side. And to that, Jesus says, No, I did not push off to the side what my Father put these laws into place to show you. I am so on brand, and I'm trying to bring you on brand. I'm trying to bring you back into what my Father's intent for these laws was. It was never about what you put in your stomach. That's what this was, the food laws were never about that. It wasn't that um, these animals were somehow mysteriously less clean. Um, what the food laws were really about were, are you going to listen? 
and follow direction. Are your, are your hearts aligned with mine? Sorry, a bug just flew in my mouth. That was wonderful. I, I guess it's clean, right? All food is, is clean now. We just heard from Jesus. I could have ate that. Ugh. Are your hearts in line with me, right? Even in the Garden of Eden, don't eat the fruit from that tree in the middle of the garden. Can you listen to that? Because that's what's best for you. Following God is what's best for us. And the food laws were a way for us to, to think about that and follow Jesus to align our hearts with his. And here Jesus is saying, the food isn't what goes into your heart and makes your heart bad. The food goes in your stomach and out of your body. God knew that from the beginning. All this food that you weren't supposed to eat, like pigs, bacon, wonderful, beautiful bacon, right? You can't eat from pigs. Is that because pigs are bad? Because pigs will ruin your heart? Because pigs and that food is, is the real problem? No, the real problem was us. And the food laws were to kind of bring us in line and help us to see what following God really means and where it could take us. And now Jesus is here. And Jesus brings out this food laws and says, no, it's what's in your heart. A lot of these laws, Paul brings out the, the circumcision instructions weren't about the flesh. That's not the important part. It was, the, the, it was aligning yourself with your Father in heaven and following him and showing the world that you're following him. These food laws, uh, God wasn't concerned with, worried about your stomach and your digestive tract. He's worried about your heart. And Jesus rightly says, the food doesn't make your heart bad, but what's in your heart can show that you are already defiled that you're already unclean. So what comes out of your heart? And he goes on to talk about sexual immorality and all these different things, evil, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. That doesn't come out because of food. Now, the food can show where your heart is. Um, and uh, other things in your life can show where your heart is, but it's what's in your heart that makes you unclean. So Jesus was saying, kind of revealing, like God didn't give you the food laws just because that was the important thing. It was a bigger point that he kept bringing throughout the Old Testament that you guys kept ignoring because it's easier for us to look at a plate of food and say, that's unclean and I'm not going to eat it. And it's harder for us to look at our lives and say, oh my goodness, I have a problem with lust. That is a big problem for me, and I need to, I need to deal with that. I need to bring that to, to God and be forgiven. I need to, to put that helping or that portion of, of, of evil down. It's not about the food. It's about where your heart is. Are we so dull? We're kind of dull still. Isn't there a sin in your life that you struggle with? And you'd be much easier to put down that extra donut at coffee hour than it would be to put down that sin that bothers you. So thanks be to God, the God that gave us Jesus, his own son, to die on the cross for us and to make us new. So that it is even possible for us to lay our sins at the foot of the cross because of Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross paid for those sins. So here we are. Are we dull? Are we dumb? Are we stupid? We are. Does God call us to task? He does. And he doesn't do it because it's mean. He gets the truth. We need to hear the truth. And it's okay to hear the truth. And sometimes we have to speak the truth to others. It's not fun, but sometimes we have to do it. He calls us to task. And it's not about the food. It's not about what goes into our body, but what comes out. And what's coming out of your body? What's coming out of your heart that shows that we are still unclean and we are still dull because we're still not through this? Jesus is calling you to lay that down and you to grow closer to him. Now, like we often say, say it again, uh, there's a lot of this dullness in us that Jesus is only going to fully take over and, and fully change when we get to heaven. And we can understand that. That is something that we're going to have to deal with. Um, and that Jesus is dealing with every day. But every day we can make those small steps toward Jesus as he's walking right with us, okay? And so this week, where are you being dull? And can you hear Jesus' voice saying you're being dull? 
and know that Jesus is not being mean to you, but he's being honest and he's there to help. And he's saying, not only are you dull, but here's the answer to your dullness. Me, more of me, Jesus says. So where this week are you going to draw closer to Jesus, lay down some of your dullness, and look at what's going on in your heart rather than all that stuff that's going on outside that has no effect on your sinfulness. But where your heart is, it's where your sin is. But where your heart is is also where your Savior is. Because Jesus is with you, saving you day by day. So here we are. This week, we are going to admit our dullness. We are going to realize that we are falling away and our heart has some terrible things coming out of it. And then we're going to give that to the Lord this week and, and be honest with your Lord and Savior um, because he already knows. We've talked about that before too. So let's pray as we start this week being a little less dull. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and thank you that you show us how silly, how dull, how foolish, how stupid, how ignorant we are. We don't like hearing that from other people and we don't like telling it to other people. But Lord, from you, we need to hear it. Lord, open our eyes to our silliness, our dullness, our foolishness, our, our ignorance, and um, open our eyes to that and show us how you're already working change and you're working redemption in our lives. And let us be thankful. Oh Lord, when it, it is time for us to tell other people that we can see their dullness, we can see their foolishness, we can see the, what's coming out of their heart and it is scary to us and is dangerous to them, help us to be gentle, truthful, honest and with love share that with them and walk alongside them as you walk alongside us and into redemption forgiveness and moving forward free from sin lord we look forward to that day where all the sin melts away and we know you fully just as we are fully known and um, it is going to be a glorious day until that day it is glorious when you walk into our our, our lives and and we can hear your voice whether you're saying i love you or whether you're saying, Jesus, that, come on, be smarter than this. You're smarter than this. And I'm here to help you grow in all situations, Lord. Help us to grow with you and be more informed and more filled with your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Enjoy this week. Don't be so dull, will you? And no, you can eat what you want to eat. But what's coming out of your heart? And sometimes... To change what's coming out of our heart means we got to watch what we eat. That's a lot of stuff in this world that we get to watch with, but Jesus is there with us. And so there is some big time hope and huge possibilities. And you find those this week and enjoy growing wiser with God as he bathes you in his love. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Monday.